Now, you might disagree with me on this, but I truly believe that the most iconic part of the James Bond series is the theme music. Uh, no number of iconic one-liners, tuxedos, or inexcusable sexism, I think, compares to the cultural impact of the James Bond theme. So who wrote the James Bond theme? Surely there's got to be some historical musical drama. Why else would I be making a video about it? Well, as it happens, no. The matter is actually settled. In fact, it was settled twice. On two separate occasions, a court found that Monty Norman is the composer of the James Bond theme and that John Barry was the original arranger. Let's start at the very beginning and just cover what everyone agrees to be true. It's the early 60s and Monty Norman is a successful composer and he's brought on to write the music for Dr. No, which is the very first James Bond film. He delivers a theme that's actually based on the melody to a song that he wrote for a musical that ended up being shelved. The song was called Good Sign, Bad Sign, and if you listen to it, you can absolutely hear the James Bond theme, that opening riff, in that original song. I was born with this unlucky sneeze, and what is worse, I came into the world the wrong way round. Bond, it's all agreed that I'm the reason why my father fell into the village pond. And Links to any of the songs that I mentioned but don't play can be found in the description of this video. So check them out if you want to and like and subscribe while you're down there. Now, once Norman delivers the melody, a fella called John Barry is brought on board to arrange the songs into the score. Now, an arranger takes the bare bones of a song, often just the melody and the chords, and expands it out to the music for a full orchestra. And that process does sometimes include a little bit of additional composition, writing uh, extra counter melodies, uh, as well as developments on musical ideas. And that's where a little bit of authorship contention can start to take place. Now we'll talk about that in a sec. So Barry's arrangement becomes the sound of James Bond, but it's part of a bigger tradition of the 60s spy theme, which is this very you know, particular style of big band jazz that you can also hear in the theme songs to shows like The Man From U.N.C.L.E. and I Spy. But I do think that the James Bond theme is a bit of an outlier for this genre. I think uh, if you compare it to uh, the Mission Impossible theme from the 60s TV show, it's a good example of what I mean here. The Mission Impossible theme is action-packed from the very beginning, whereas the James Bond theme sort of takes a while to get to the point, and it has a long build-up to an eventual final climax. And I think that's because each theme introduces a very different type of story. The James Bond films, of course, are long, and they do take a little while to get to that final climax, and the music kind of reflects that. Whereas a TV show like Mission Impossible is fast-paced and you know big and bold from the very beginning, because, you know, they need to keep your attention through the commercial break. The composer and podcaster David W. Collins might call this an example of a great melody telling a great story. And if you find any of this sort of stuff interesting, I think his podcast, The Soundtrack Show, is, is a must listen. But anyway, we are way off track, so back to Bond and Barry. John Barry kept working on James Bond films for the next couple of decades. He worked on 11 different titles between 62 and 87, starting with Dr. No and ending with The Living Daylights. And I think his long-term association with the franchise is maybe part of the reason that there has been some confusion over the authorship of the theme. On two different occasions, Monty Norman sued publishers for libel who uh, implied or said that John Barry was the writer of the James Bond theme. And the most recent of those was in 2001 against the Sunday Times. Now, Monty Norman won both of those cases, and that has set that precedent that I mentioned earlier uh, in the courts to say that, yeah, Monty Norman is the composer of the James Bond theme song. Honestly, though, I do uh, appreciate the concern at the heart of this issue, at least in like a, a general sense. It's often the case that the arrangement of a film score has a much bigger impact on the final film than the notes that are actually being played. I think a really good example of this is the theme song to Stranger Things.
Now the actual notes from that piece are little more than just a couple of broken chords that are played from a Roland arpeggiator, but it's the timbre and arrangement of those synthesizers that Dixon and Stein used to create the vibe that Stranger Things is all about. It evokes a particular uh, style of music, a particular place in time, and a narrative style that helps the story. So I can see why some people might have had the opinion that John Barry, the arranger of the James Bond soundtrack, might have deserved some of the writer's credit or royalties that Monty Norman was receiving as the composer of the theme all these years. But if you are thinking that, then I'd maybe draw your attention to the rest of John Barry's career. Before he passed away in 2011, he worked on about 100 different TV shows or films as composer or arranger. He won five Academy Awards, two BAFTAs, a Golden Globe, four Grammys, and was made an Order of the British Empire in 1999. So yeah, John Barry did just fine. And realistically, I think it was in a large part, his association with James Bond that got the momentum uh, for the career that he ended up having. So honestly, I don't think he lost out all that much by not being the composer of the James Bond theme song. As for Monty Norman, he's still alive and well, uh, at least at the time of publishing this video. He recently did an interview with CNN, so I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to watch that and hear Monty Norman's thoughts on the origin of the theme. Thank you for watching. If you had a good time, please like and subscribe and hang around for future videos. I normally make videos about jazz and jazz history, but I, you know, will stretch my uh, my wings a little bit from time to time. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's anything you think I reckon I should be making videos on in the future. I would be keen for you to do some of the work for me. Until then, see you later. Bye.